I was working uh, back um, uh, doing backup and restore of uh, a bunch of virtual machines this weekend. Uh, not entirely planned, put it that way, but uh, over my entire career, I've been uh, the biggest fan of, of Samsung hard drives, always being very reliable, even down to the consumer grade versions, they have been reliable. But now with these um, uh, Thor, uh, four terabyte NVMe uh, Samsung disk. This is the third one that decides to go shaky on me. And the way it expresses itself, it, it, it's no fun at all. But once you start to put load on it, uh, 20, 30 VMs running on the same disk, Windows forgets that it exists, forgets that it has a file system. So you get like an invalid MS DOS function. Like, no. <laughs> It's right here. It's very much valid. Uh, and the only way workaround to get it back is to power off the device or workstation and bring it back up again. And then it will run for another few hours and then rinse repeat in another few hours. Uh, so I, I bought two new ones. So I have some store for I can actually move them away to. So I've been spending my, my weekend and the few work days that we had so far of migrating content away from it. Uh, and that ended up uh, being uh, a video out of it, in fact. So <laughs> if I share my screen here, um, here, uh, up on our little YouTube channel, or one of them, I should say, because this is not uh, by a monster one, but the one Chris has one, my blog, or the, the one that is connected to, to uh, the blog where, where me and Andrew and some others are, are posting our findings. Uh, uh, if I sort on videos here, this one, the CPAC archiving utility, uh, not too many people uh, have heard about it. I've been using it for almost 10 years by now. Uh, I stumbled across it and, and I blame uh, Kent Oglon for this, but we were supposed to do a training together. Uh, at that time, I lived in Sweden and I was supposed to have copied all the training VMs with me to the US. Uh, I didn't. So now I needed to transfer almost 200 gig of VMs over from Sweden to over a hotel Wi-Fi, and that is really stretching it, uh, to put it mildly. But this little utility runs on any Windows version. It runs on Linux and Mac as well. But it can archive tons of VMs to a fairly small footprint. So if you have 50 Windows 11 VMs, that are like 40 gig each, the resulting file is going to be about 40 because it works on a block level. Uh, same as the Windows the deduplication does in server. Like when you have a volume like I have here with you know, tons of VMs, almost two terabyte, but this one is, is 700. Or this one here, uh, this is the one I'm trying to rescue at the moment. Um, that's about a, a, a 1.3 occupying 800. And probably this one here is one of the better ones. Yeah, 2.3 terabyte using 500. So, wow. Yeah, long story short, I've been archiving uh, VMs into this backup utility. It's just a command line utility, but it's uh, fantastic. So, when you have a backup of your VMs already, so these are all my server VMs and all my client VMs across. There's like 100 VMs in total. When you have an archive, you can just continue to add to it. And it runs super quick because it only copies the deltas into the archive. And when you restore it, you can say, all right, what version would you like to have from it? So this is like a, a poor man's versioning backup, but it's all self-contained in the single file. Uh, so this one has been my friend for the past few days here and uh, highly recommend looking into it if you, if you need an archiving utility that is suitable for virtual machines. So that's what I've been doing. Very cool yeah. stuff. Bruce had a question about your um, uh, Hyper-V backups that you were talking about. Does it work on VHDX files too? It, it, it works, absolutely. It works on any file. Uh, it's just a generic backup archiving utility. 
I believe I put the link to it under here. I'm not going to play this one, but I was looking for the links. Uh, yeah, so this, this, is the, this is the tool itself. Um, and it's been around for a good while, the, the, the tool. So last update was like 2017 or something, but it still works beautiful and it works for all type of content. Obviously, if you have a, a folder with your entire Blu-ray archive, yeah, you're not going to find much of data deduplication savings on that one. But if you have virtual hard drives and whatnot, you, you can absolutely do that. Uh, prior to learning about this tool, I was actually using virtual hard drives as containers. So I would basically open up disk management I would do it in PowerShell, but the, the, the same concept. And I would create a virtual hard drive and I would enable data deduplication on that one. And I would pull all my content in that volume and then I would run dedup against it. Uh, so I remember back in the days I, I wrote a post about that. That was, that was a while ago. Uh, See if I can snatch that from a different link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one here. So how to store 283 gigs in, in 16 gig using PowerShell. Uh, so I used the PowerShell script to create the archives, create the virtual uh, hard drive, and then I will enable data duplication on it, copy the stuff to it, run the dedu job, and dismount it. And once I had that one, I would then run a, a, an archiving utility on top of that. Uh, but the problem was that was it only worked on servers that has data duplication and not everybody has that. The CPAC utility is just a single file and it works on both clients and servers. There are no requirements. In fact, if you try to run it on a volume that has been deduped with server deduped, that archive is not gonna be happy, one bit. So make sure when you put it, store it on a volume that is not deduped. So in my lab, I even named one of my volumes, no dedupes, I would never make the mistake of put in the archive anywhere else. So yes, it works with virtual hardware. Awesome. Great stuff.